Hi, I'm Dave Wolf from University of New Hampshire Interoperability Lab. And today we're going to talk a little bit about NVMe, what is it, who uses it, how it works, and how that technology has evolved over the last few years. So first, what is NVMe? NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. And really what it is, it's a special protocol designed for talking to solid state drives that is meant to talk to flash memory. And that's a big difference between the spinning disk drive that you might have had in your, your first computer. For those, there was a special command set that was all about how to change the head on a spinning disk and things like that. With the advent of flash drives, you didn't need any of that anymore. So NVMe is a streamlined protocol for talking to flash memory in solid state drives. Super low latency, super high performance. One of the first places you saw NVMe getting used was in the client or consumer space. So think about a SSD in, in a laptop or in a desktop uh, PC. So people that liked high performance, they loved having an uh, NVMe SSD in their laptop or in their PC. You even saw it in some uh, mobile applications. But also early on, you started to see NVMe used in an enterprise application in some servers, sometimes as a boot drive, but also sometimes as a cache drive. And what that might look like was this. You'd have a server, and there'd be a bunch of storage in there. And if we're talking about capacity, a lot of times this storage, these drives, are going to be SATA, uh, sometimes SAS as well. But for low latency operations, one or two of these drives would be NVMe. So specific flash drives with low latency for applications that needed really high performance uh, read and write. So these NVMe drives would kind of act as a cache in the server. And then once those operations were done, things could be moved over to the SAS or SATA drives that were there for a longer term storage for capacity. So that was one of the initial applications we saw for NVMe kind of in the enterprise space. So one of the next important evolutions in NVMe was NVMe over fabrics. Taking that protocol that was designed for talking to solid state drives, talking to flash memory, and porting it to be able to be run over a network. Now PCIe worked great, uh, but you were limited how many drives you could put in a single chassis. Even if you were using external PCIe, there was only you know, a few feet uh, that you could run that. So to enable uh, you to expand those networks a little bit further, we put NVMe over Fabric, so enabling it to run on the network. And that might look something a little bit like this. You might have a server, it still might have some NVMe storage in it, but it also would have a NIC in it, maybe a 40 gig or even 100 gig NIC. And that uh, NIC, the protocol running on top of that, might be something like Rocky, RDMA over converged Ethernet. And then on top of that, the NVMe specification uh, defined how NVMe traffic could run on top of RDMA over converged Ethernet, or in some cases, fiber channel. And so what that would allow is you would have a high bandwidth, high throughput network connection to a set of JBOFs or storage appliances that again, had NVMe storage inside them, but you were able to connect them over the network. So that gave you a longer reach and also enabled you to expand the capacity of your storage network. And you saw a lot of this, especially Rocky, uh, in the high performance computing space. Uh, and usually these deployments were within a single rack or maybe just a few racks. The next stage in NVMe evolution that we're gonna talk about is the use of NVMe over TCP, using TCP as a fabric transport. And to help us visualize this, to help us really understand it, we have this little animation about how NVMe over TCP can be deployed. In a sense, you might think of NVMe TCP a little bit like a kind of spiritual successor to iSCSI. So iSCSI was a protocol, again, for storage uh, that came out probably in the early 2000s about block storage, but running that protocol over the internet. And so it allowed you to have a disk drive, even if it was far away, to appear local to that system. NVMe over TCP does the same thing, except for SSDs, for flash-based storage. The really great things about NVMe TCP is that since it uses TCP, essentially uses the internet as you know it. And so distance limitations that maybe we had with external PCIe or even with Rocky aren't as much of a concern using NVMe TCP. Now, of course, there are latency concerns. If your network is extremely large and there's large distances between nodes in the network, uh, latency is going to be a problem. But NVMe TCP has proven to be a very popular option for NVMe over fabrics in a hyperscale data center environment where they understand their traffic really well 
and they can use NVMe TCP for cases or for applications that are not latency sensitive. So as you can see from today's video, NVMe is found at home in lots of different storage applications. It might be in your laptop that you use at home. Uh, it's most certainly in some of the data centers that serve up some of the applications that we use every day. Uh, feel free to comment on this or mention topics you'd like to see addressed about NVMe in future videos.